Hey guys, this is Susie with The Secret Garden of Eden. I was going to go live tonight here and talk to you all and tell you, just see how your Friday night's going. If you're in a different part of the world, Saturday, trying to tag a few people here to see if I can get them. Well, we're trying to. got a few people tagged. I see that a bunch of you guys are already watching. How are you? You guys having a good Friday night? Uh, I hope you all can hear me. Alright, there we go. So I'm trying to do something a little different tonight so it's a little uh, easier to read me. your comments. There we go. So tonight I kind of want to talk about a lot of you are stuck on something that I've noticed repeatedly. It looks like we're all just truthfully manifesting one thing. And that one thing that we're manifesting is our whole world. And it's the one thing that we are focusing on to be able to look at what we're doing, what's going on in our world, and how we are focusing to be able to get what we want. And everybody seems to be stuck on their specific person. And I am a specific person specialist. I help people get back together. I make sure when you are back together that you stay together. But the thing a lot of you seem to be forgetting, I told you I'm all trying to do something a little different so I can read your comments better. But the thing I notice is that when you guys are manifesting, that's the only thing you're working on. You're forgetting to have fun. You're forgetting to venture out into the world and act as if you're living your dream life. If you are living your dream life, then you're going to be one, only talking about the fact that everything is working out for you. And if everything's working out for you, then you're going to be walking around literally saying, I'm living my dream life. I'm living my dream life. Because if you're literally living your dream life, everything you have, everything you want, everything you do is right there at your fingertips. And it's literally happening now. You're still focusing on how to bring there now instead of being there. So we're not trying to bring there to here. We're trying to bring us to there. And when you're focusing on everything in your life and that everything is one specific manifestation, whether it's money, the love of your life, if it's the job, better relationship with your family, your friends, it's manifesting a new car. If you are strictly, strictly focusing on one thing, then you're not getting Neville's teachings. And Neville teaches you to live your dream life. And when all you do is focus on, I want this person, you forget what it's like to have fun. You forget what it's like, whoops, camera falling. You forget literally what it's like to have everything work out for you. So most of the time when I'm doing other things, the only thing I'm saying to myself is that I'm living my dream life. Why am I living my dream life? Why is everything working out for me? Why am I living my dream life? It doesn't matter then if XYZ is not happening because I'm living my dream life and I am in the end of my desire because if I'm living my dream I already have the husband I already have the car I already have the house I have the 2.7 million in the bank I have the puppy and look guys I even brought you a swan I even have the swan so if I have all of this then the only thing I'm focused on is how much fun my life is so somebody posted today, and I was so proud. She said she walked around saying that she was having a, an amazing day, a lovely day. And she talked about how she got a ride home from work so she didn't have to ride her bike, how people were doing certain things for her, and everything was going great 
in her her day. You want every day to be like that. You want every day where somebody brings a cup of coffee to you when you're sitting at your desk at work. You want every day where you go to the break room and, oh my God, I forgot my lunch at home, but yet somebody brought you lunch. You don't have to go buy it because somebody brought it. You want to be able to get that ride home from work because you just don't feel like riding your bike. It's not that you have to choose between manifesting the love of your life and the perfect job. It's not you have to manifest the car so you can get to your job so you can have the perfect job. It's having it all at once. And the only thing I've noticed repeatedly is that you guys are focusing solely on that one thing. Well, that one thing, when you get it, then what are you going to do? How are you going to react? How are you going to live? What is your life going to be like? Because if I have the swan, which he's a cute little baby, then I don't want the swan. So he's sitting here and he's doing this live video with me because I already have him. He's not focused on, oh my God, I have to get the swan. I have to get the swan. If I get the swan, then life's going to be perfect. If I get back together with my, per my, my person, it's going to be perfect. If I get my dream car, it's going to be perfect. It has to be perfect in order to get that. So if we only focus on one thing we want, we're missing the bigger picture of life. Why am I having an amazing day? Why is my day fun? Why is everything working out for me? All of those things, if you just repeat that one phrase throughout the day, and then in the morning, you do your imaginal scene. At night, you do your imaginal scene. The rest of the day, you're not obsessing because you're living your dream. And if you're living your dream, you don't need to obsess. So you walk around saying, I'm living my dream life. Why am I living my dream life? Isn't it wonderful I'm living my dream life? Thank you, I'm living my dream life. And because you're doing that, our focus isn't on a specific thing. It's everything that makes our life go. When you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, when you're walking down the street after work because you decided you wanted to get out in the fresh air. I haven't been able to do that because it's been raining. So I literally could, if I took my umbrella out, went for a walk. As long as it's not lightning, I'm good, right? But we're not doing that. We're eating, sleeping, breathing, drinking, talking, asking questions about, am I doing this right? Yes, you're doing it right. The question means you're doing it wrong. Everything you do, I'm living my dream life. I go to McDonald's to get something to eat. I'm living my dream life. I go grocery shopping. We all know I don't grocery shop. I hate grocery shopping, so I get help. So I'm living my dream life because somebody goes with me to go grocery shopping. I'm living my dream life because when I go to do my hair, my hairdresser knows exactly the way it's supposed to be done. I don't have to tell her. I just tell her whether or not I want my bangs or if I want to grow them out. Because she asks me that. Are we keeping the bangs or are we growing them out this time? She knows me. Because I'm going to say, no, I'm growing them out. And then the next time she cuts them, can we trim them? They're in my eyes. I thought we were growing them out. Well, we are, but they're in my eyes and I can't see. Those are the things that I'm focusing on during the day because I'm literally walking around saying, I'm living my dream life. Everything's working out for me. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't care how. I don't care why. I just know it is. And the other thing, I'm not answering my questions. So when I'm asking why am I living my dream life, I'm letting an entire universe give me that answer. I'm letting the people who cross my path answer that question. I'm letting people who spoil me answer that question. I'm letting the guy who lets me in when I'm driving down the road because I'm in the wrong lane and my turn's coming up and I have to make a left and there's a traffic jam and I turn my turn signal on and I'm spoiled. That guy's going to let me in. I don't focus on 
Yes, it was. Is it a lovely? It is absolutely a lovely day. And when you have those lovely days and you focus on what you're doing, and that only focus is on 2.7 million in my bank account, I have to marry this person, or I have to have this car. You guys stop living life and you stop having fun and you start obsessing. So in order to get out of obsession, you don't have to drop the desire. I don't have to be drop my desire to marry my little swan. I don't have to drop my desire to have a Camaro or a puppy. But if I'm truly living my dream life, I'm already married to my partner. I already have the little puppy. I have the bank account I want. And I'm doing exactly what I want. So at the end of my day, somebody's buying me champagne. Pia actually just said that. Somebody's buying me a bottle of champagne because she's having a lovely day. And everything's going right because her focus isn't on one thing. It's focusing on at the end of the day when I look back, everything went right. It was perfect. It was my dream. And the more you say that, the more you focus on that, the more that grows, the more that grows, you're going to be like, wow. So I'm happily married to my dream guy. I have my car. I have my house. Now what do I want to manifest? Well, maybe some of us want kids. Maybe some of us want to go on a trip to Italy. I'm on that list if you're going because I want to go see the Sistine Chapel. I want to see what Da Vinci painted. So if I'm living my dream, then I'm taking my dream guy and I'm going to Italy. It may not be my honeymoon. It may not be my first anniversary. It could be my 10th anniversary. I don't know. It's on my bucket list. So let's focus on going. Your dreams, your wants, your needs, your desires, they're going to change from today to a year from now to five years from now, to 10 years from now. But if all you're focusing on is this person makes me happy, you're not living your dream life. You are stuck waiting for it to start. If you are focusing solely 100% on one manifestation, Joe will tell you to make a list and write down things to manifest. So you're focusing on other things. Whether that list is a rainbow, a cup of coffee, somebody letting you in in traffic, getting to work on time, somebody opening the doors for you. I always get perfect parking spots. I always park first, second. The farthest I park down is number four. Why? Because I don't like walking to the door. I don't want to be all sweaty when I get into the store. The thing is, I focus my day on what's going right. And I only talk about what's going right. So if I talk about living my dreams, Brandon, my author friend, he got his book written. He got it published. He got a new apartment. He's doing comedy gigs. He's living his dream. He's still working nine to five. He doesn't care because the rest of the day, he's living in his dream life. He's not... He's not thinking, well, I have to do this in order to be, I have to do this in order to, he's focusing on, I work these hours, I can go to this comedy club, I can go to this comedy club, I'm working on my second novel, I'm working on the Susie novel, as I'm calling it, because the main character, one of the main characters is about me, and if you keep focusing on other things you're no longer obsessed with that one thing. So we need to remember to live a life, to have fun, and absolutely walk around and say things like, why am I lucky? And it, ha it is amazing because things will start happening to you just because. I walk around and say, why am I spoiled? And when I walk around saying, why am I spoiled? People bring me things. They do things for me. 
they hold the doors open. I don't even have to ask, hey, can you hold that door and let me catch up? They stop and automatically, automatically do it for me. And when they automatically do it, I walk around with a smile on my face. And if you are from the law of attraction and you believe in vibrational energy, if I'm walking around and I'm happy and I'm smiling and I'm not stressed and I'm living my dream life, everything's coming to me. Absolutely everything comes to me and I barely have to do anything. But do I actually have to do things? Yes. If I want a better job or I want a promotion, I can't sit there at work and go, I get a promotion, I get a promotion, I get a promotion, I get a promotion. I actually have to fill out an application and request that I get a put on the list for that promotion. If I want to buy the car, I actually have to leave my house to go get the car. I can shop online, but sooner or later I'm going to have to go somewhere unless I know somebody who drives a semi-carrier that hauls cars and I'm spoiled and they literally deliver it to my front door. But then I still have to walk out my front door to get the car. I still have to sign the papers that says I received the car. So we focus on so much, I don't have to do anything. He's going to come to me. It's going to come to me. Yes, it is. It's going to come to you in the most interesting, wonderful way possible. But when you get it, you're not going to know that reaching out to pick up the swan was the bridge of incident. It might be picking up my glass of pop. And if you're looking for that bridge of incidents, then you're still focusing on how's it going to happen. I don't ask how I'm living my dream life. Because if I do literally say, Susie, how am I living my dream life? I have to start answering it personally. But if I say, I don't know why, I don't know how, I'm living my dream life, but I am. I'm not personally answering it. I'm out there going universe, people, how are you shifting so I get my dreams? And I have big dreams. I want to be happily married. I want to have an amazing bank account. I want to go to Rome. I still got to get over my fear of flying. So that's another thing on my list. But if I'm living my dream life, I'm not afraid to fly. It's all about the way you guys look at things out there. It's all about the way you focus. Focus on the broad spectrum of your day. Make a list of things that you want to manifest, but at the end of the day, make a list of everything that happened today that was amazing. Somebody brought me a cup of coffee. Somebody opened a door. Somebody let me in traffic. Somebody... Fix something that you're doing at work. Somebody gave you a ride home on your bike. Hey, somebody bought somebody a bottle of champagne. I wasn't that lucky girl, but definitely somebody in here got a bottle of champagne at the end of her day. You can manifest not being afraid to fly. I haven't figured it out. But if you're living in the end, and we're in Rome, and we're staring at the ceiling, at the Sistine Chapel and seeing the amazing painting that Leonardo da Vinci did, we're not focusing on that fear of flying because we're literally standing in the chapel looking at it. And if I have to go on Google and do a virtual tour of the chapel, then I know what I'm doing, where I'm going. If I'm on Google, I might as well pull up Google Maps and do an aerial view of the streets around it so I'm even more familiar with it. Because if I'm in Rome looking at the chapel ceiling, I'm not focusing on my fear of flying. And that's what we're all doing. We're focusing on what's causing us not to have our life. And we're questioning it. Well, I'm doing this and this isn't happening. I'm doing this and this isn't happening because we're focusing on the wrong thing. When I say I'm driving my dream car, it's a Camaro, it's black, it's a little speed demon. 
it goes vroom, vroom. We all know it. When I get it, I'm going to be the Jeep guy, officer. My girlfriend and my Jeep have been kidnapped. What's your girlfriend look like? Well, you know, she's about yay tall, blonde. Can you give us a better description? Well, no. Um, she has a ponytail, I think. Okay, tell me about the Jeep. Pull up a picture of the girl standing in front of the Jeep, and then they're telling you every freaking detail about what type of Jeep it is, what the engine is, what the exhaust system is, because they decided this was what they wanted, and now they're telling you, this is what I got. So if you want the new jump, I got the new job. If you want the car, I got the car. You want the dream life, I'm living my dream life. You want the specific person. The love of your life is way better of a word to say. I am married to the love of my life. I'm living with the love of my life. The love of my life is here because I'm living my dream life. Then I'm not focusing on anything other than the fact why is everything working out for me. And then when I do get them, what are you guys going to focus on? Actually think about that for a minute. What are you going to focus on once you manifest that person? You didn't build the friendship. You didn't build the job you wanted. You still are having problems with friends and family members. You are still focusing on, I want everything else to go this way, but because I got him, that's going to happen. No. Build it all together. I focus on I have great friendships. I focus on I'm living. Exactly, Maria. I'm living happily ever after. So if I am Cinderella, again with my glass slipper, I have the spare in the attic in my room. So I'm not worried that I'm going to get the prince because I know I already got him and I have the proof in my attic. So I'm going about, and I'm doing what the wicked stepmother says. I'm doing what my wicked stepsisters say because I know in my head I'm married to the prince living my dream life. I'm sleeping beauty. I know the prince is going to kiss me and wake me up. So I'm in my dreamland. I'm building friendships. I'm learning how to speak Spanish. Where are my Spanish-speaking friends? Because... Y'all are failing me because I'm not living the end that I speak Spanish. Because in my dream life, I'm multilingual, multi-multilingual, because I want to speak Spanish and French and Italian and Greek and German and English, so that's six. We have to come up with the seventh one. I like odd numbers. But in order to speak that, I actually have to pick up a book, an app, CDs, something to be able to learn it. I can't just go to bed and necessarily wake up fluently speaking, reading, and writing a foreign language. And that's kind of what we're expecting to do. No, in order to get the love of my life to reach out, I don't have to physically barrage him with a text message. But if I'm taking action, I'm going to the car dealership and I'm getting my car. If I want the love of my life, I can text him. We all know the easiest topic of conversation to text. Um, let me think. Hmm. It starts with an F and ends with an L. And there's a... B-A-M-A -A in it. So, oh, let me think. I could text him because he's the only person on planet Earth who doesn't know that this chick is that fan. So, I could text him, you know, hey, football season's starting, and I was wondering, you remember that conversation we had? Dot, dot, dot. What conversation? You know about me switching teams? Are you still going to be okay if I... Switch team? Oh, so because my grandfather also loved the Badgers. I claim the Badgers in my heart. But we all know Alabama 
is my soul and I bleed Bama. So of course switching teams is easy for me, but then we're on the same page and I'm totally 100% perfect because I'm now an Alabama fan. But it gave him an opening because I felt inspired. I'm inspired because I'm walking around saying I'm living my dream life. So if I text him, it's simply, I don't care if he answers. I'm just going to ask a stupid question and see, hmm, does he answer? And I'm going to send out the text, and then we all know I'm going to go get something to drink, and then I'm going to go find the Alabama football game on TV, even if it's a rerun. And then I'm going to go get something to snack on, and I'm going to grab a book that I might be reading, and I'm going to sit down with all of my stuff at the table, and I'm going to focus on the game. Or if I'm waiting for the game to come on, I'm going to focus on reading my book. I'm not going to be picking up my phone and going, did he text, did he text, did he text? No, because I'm focused on the the game coming on. It comes on in 30 minutes. I've got my snacks, I've got my drink. I know who's coming over to watch the game with me. And if you're a Clemson fan, mm -mm, not getting in the door. Mm -mm -mm, no way, no how, I don't care how much you think you can bribe me. You ain't getting in the door, even if you're bringing the pizza. Because that's my world and in my dream life, nobody roots for Clemson. Not in my world. And I focus all day long. Why is it going right for me? I make a decision. That's all I got to focus on. I've planted the seed. I've made the decision. Now my verbal words. So when you're out in public and somebody says, hey, how's things going? Great. I'm living my dream life. It doesn't matter if you are or not. They're like, really? Absolutely. Everything just seems to be working out for me. And I'm, I'm just having fun. I'm happy. I'm having the time of my life. And they're like, that's great. So you don't have to be specific. When your family says, when are you getting married? Haven't set the yet, date yet, Graham. I'll let you know when I do. In the meantime, I'm living my dream life and everything's working out for me. So that should be around the corner. You just got to answer their questions with a, a question. Why are you so happy to get me married off? Wouldn't it be better I got the right person, Graham? How long did it take you to get Grandpa? Change the subject and get her to tell you about how she met Grandpa. But if you're thinking, I'm going to the families this weekend and they're all going to ask me, when are you getting married? When are you getting a boyfriend? That's what you're getting. But if you're going to the family and you're saying, I'm living my dream life. They're happy for me. They're excited for me. They're you know, waiting for me to tell them what amazing things happened this week. So what's amazing this week? Um, let me think. Oh, I have a three-day weekend. I went to the grocery store all by myself. I didn't have to deal with anybody. And the guy actually got my favorite toilet paper down for me. Kind of weird, but it's really nice because I'm spoiled. I got a couple of shirts. I got Reese's Peanut Butter M&M's. And then I got home and I have to lug all this stuff up to the third floor apartment and somebody was coming out and I was getting out of my car. They stood there and held the door open while I got all of my bags out to come upstairs. I didn't ask them, hey, can you hold on a second? I got a handful. They just, hey, how you doing? And stood there and held the door open. Because I'm living my dream life and people do nice things for me. But if you're not living your dream, then when that person comes into your life, it's not going to make you happy. That car's not going to make you happy. The $2.7 million in the bank account makes it easier to go to Italy. But if you're going to Italy alone, how fun is that? For some people, yeah, it's great. It's amazing. But for other people, I'm on this trip by myself. Let's go 
back to the kitchen and sit on the counter and manifest that person to make breakfast for you because in order to go to Italy, I have to have the perfect partner. Heck no. You can take a friend. You can take a relative. You can take your little sister. You can take your children. I know somebody who on her 50th birthday decided she was going to take her kids and go to Italy. And she spent an entire month in Italy. She didn't wait for the perfect guy to come to take it. She took her kids. So whatever you focus on, make sure it's your dream life. Because if you're not, you're missing 90% of your day. And 90% of your life, you're not focusing on it because that 10% is the only thing you can think about. So what would you prefer to do? Have the friends, so the love of your life is out bowling. You can go have a wine and nightgown party with your girlfriends. Somebody invited me to one recently. You can go to the beach without them because you can go with your friends. You can go rock climbing. You can take a pottery class, a painting class. You have to have things to do because if you're only focusing on when I get home at the end of the day, he's there and making me happy, then my whole life revolves around one thing. And I don't want it to revolve around one specific person because they're going to feel choked. So I changed my question. Why am I in a blissfully happy relationship to why am I living my dream life? I'm getting even better parking spots. I got my hair cut. Didn't even really have to ask. I walked in and I'm like, oh. Yeah, she's like, we're really busy. Next week, though, Wednesday. Okay. I actually popped in on Monday. And I got my hair cut Monday. I just don't focus on one specific thing, guys. And that's why little things happen to me. When If you're on the phone and I get invited out for dinner, I get told to bring me this and I'll do that for you. I get people who bring me coffee and we know exactly which one of you brings me paints because she's absolutely amazing and not only does she bring me paints, but she brings me coffee. But I'm not literally walking around going, Patty loves me, she spoils me, so she's going to bring me paints and coffee. I don't even think about that. I don't think about where or how I'm getting my cup of coffee. But in my dream life, I get coffee, I get Diet Dr. Pepper, I get my favorite foods, I get my parking spots, I get people to help me go grocery shopping, I help people to create better lives, to get back with the people they love, to repair the relationship with the person they love so that they don't go through what I did. So my misery gave me a reason to study relationships and how people think and when I started studying them and listening to them because the biggest part of helping somebody is to be able to clearly communicate with them but if I'm not listening to what the problem is then I can't help you so if I'm trying to help you manifest a car and you're wanting to manifest a puppy we're not on the same page but that's exactly what you guys are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You're manifesting a car and the puppy's showing up and you're like, this isn't working out. I'm doing everything correctly and it's not working out. I don't doubt if what I'm working on works because I say it always works out for me effortlessly and easily. I don't ask. Am I doing this right? Because I don't care. I don't put that meaning 
to what I'm doing. If I'm asking why is this happening, then I'm stuck in the middle. If I'm saying it's going to work out for me, I've already moved past that situation. If I'm focused on living my dream life, I've already way past that situation because I'm in the end. So my there is here because it doesn't matter when the car shows up, when the dog shows up, when the guy shows up. I already have my rose colored glasses. I have my virtual goggles. I reject anything I don't like. So you text me and it says, I hate you. I'm going to tell people you text me then it says, send me love. And I will literally stand there in front of everybody and, and you'll be like, I text you. And I'm like, yeah, I got your text. Thanks for sending love. That's not what I said. Really? And I'm going to keep saying, really? Because I thought it said you sent love. Other people focus on, well, I got a bad text. They text you. Who gives a crap what the text says at this point? They text you. So if you're thinking they sent love, oh my God, they text me and sent me love. I'm thinking, oh my God, he texts me. Does that mean he's going to come over and watch the football game now? No, it doesn't. It just means my phone went off and said I have a text from that person. It only means something when I open that text and I read it and I don't like what that text says and I walk around and be like, he gave me a text and I hated it. He texted me and he sent me love. I'm already changing it. I go to the car dealership. No, I'm sorry, we can't finance you for that car. But that's the car I want. Well, no, we can't do that. I don't think you heard me. I'm going home with that car. I got that car. Because all I'm hearing is, okay, we're working on the financing and the details. What's your dollar point? How much do you want your payment to be? How much do you want to put down? Well, um, I already figured all that out in my head, so I don't have to say it. I just have to say, I'm living my dream. I got my car. I'm living my dream. I got my dog. Literally, my son walks around all day long throughout his life, and he goes, I got this. I got that. I got this. I got that. I walk up to him. I'm not going to say, did you get the new truck? And he's going to respond, no. I'm going to walk up to him because he didn't show me the new truck, so I know he doesn't physically have it yet, and I'm going to go, how's the truck hunting coming? And he's going to say, well, Mom, I've got it narrowed down to three trucks. Well, go show me the three trucks. We'll go take a look at them and see which one you like the best. What about truck A, B, and C? And I'll help him narrow down his choices, and that when he picks it, I'm the one helping him going, when are you going to bring me, oh, he came by with that new truck and we went and got ice cream. That's how I work. Are you going to pick me up from work in your new truck? Are you going to drive me to work in your new truck? Because it's raining out and we all know I don't drive in the rain. Those are things that I think of, so I'm not the person who's going to go to you and say, are you faking it? You're lying about it? Because I don't care. Be Donald Trump. I'm building this. I'm building this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. He learned from a master, Norman Vincent Peale. Norman said the power of positive thinking. So the more you can say it out loud, I'm living my dream life, it replaces everything. Because you already have scripted it, you've already thought about it, you've already walked around living in the end, and then you already doubted it, and then you went back to thinking about it. So now, the only thing you need to focus on is why is it so blissfully freaking happy? Aw, thank you.
my end, my curl. You guys see them? I walked around saying I have curly hair. At first, they had to curl it. And then I'm like, nope, I don't need to curl it because I have curly hair. So I just moose it. I have a friend who told me about a different product, so I'm trying the different product. And she's like, do smaller sections. Not the big sections like we talked about. Do smaller sections so you get more defined curls. So I'm training my curls now on how I want them to specifically look. And I'm using products because that's what I would naturally do. Talking out loud. I'm doing it. I'm married to my swan. He's the most amazing person in the world. I don't have to tell every person I meet. I don't have to go up to my daughter and go, I'm happily married. My daughter knows I manifest a gazillion of one things. She'll be like, what are you working on today? Oh, I don't know. But she knows it always involves her because my conversations are sitting at her coffee dining room table, sitting at mine, sitting on her couch, sitting on my couch, being in her salon, saying, I got this. And she hands me something to drink and says, Mom, that's great. Good job. I'm so proud of you or I'm so happy for you. So when I'm talking out loud, I'm doing my hair. I'm washing the dishes. I'm vacuuming the floor. I'm cleaning the house. And I'm not just talking about the love of my life. I'm talking about my kids. I'm talking about my puppy. I'm talking about my parking spots. I'm talking about everything that I want to create in my life. So I want a friend to go out for dinner with me. So I walked around. I have amazing friends. I have friends I get to go out to dinner with. Now that's expanding and we're thinking about including a few more people. And we always go to the same place. And my friend keeps calling the waiter her boyfriend. She even does it to his face. Boyfriend, how you doing tonight? I'm doing it. I'm talking about it. I'm on a video recording live on Facebook talking out loud that I am happily married to the love of my life. I already know who he is, so I don't need to do anything more than just walk around. I'm tapping the steering wheel in my car to the beat of the music, and I am doing, I'm happily married to the love of my life. I am singing the Barney song. Y'all know it. I love you. You love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. I'm happily married now. You can talk to them. If you are asking if you can talk to them, then you don't think that talking to them is correct. If you're saying, I'm walking around talking to the love of my life, and I'm asking him what he wants for dinner, and he's telling me pizza and beer and the Alabama football game, hell yes, we're having a good night. But I'm not questioning whether or not I'm doing it right. I'm assuming that's bringing them closer. Everything I do and say out loud brings whatever I want to me quickly and easily. So if I'm having an imaginary conversation, even if they're not here, I'm doing it with my daughter. I'm washing the dishes and I'm having the conversation about whatever I'm manifesting that she's going to give me the drink and say, Mom, I'm so happy for you. I'm saying it out loud when I'm doing the dishes. I'm saying it out loud when I'm vacuuming the floor. And if I'm vacuuming the floor and he's watching the Alabama game, I'm going to tell him, pick up your feet. So I'm vacuuming around the couch. Uh, dude, pick up your feet. Hello? Are you paying attention over here? I said, pick up your feet, turn the game up. I can't hear it. But why am I vacuuming the floor? Because 
three-year-old spilt potato chips all over the place. And it has to be cleaned up because you don't want the dog to eat it. Or worse, the three-year-old to pick it up and eat it because it's already been the five-second rule. I don't doubt anything I do. Because when I doubted the things that I did, it didn't work out for me. So I assume everything I think, I do, and I say gets me what I want. And I say it out loud. Now, there are a few people who I can say those things to out loud. There's a few people I can go to, and Patty knows she's my sounding board. I will go to Patty, and because I'm having a problem, I'm having a bad day, I go to Patty. Patty knows what I'm manifesting. She knows what I want. And she will turn it on me. And she will ask questions. What's your end? Are we venting? Or are we trying to refocus your direction? What exactly are you doing? Even when I'm venting, I'm focusing forward. Even when I'm venting, it's in my virtual goggles and I'm venting about what I want to see. So I'm human. I have emotions. I have thoughts. I have doubts that creep in. No, that's the old story. I'm no longer telling that. Everything I do is focus forward. The swan just swims happily in the water, guys. He's not looking to see if there's a shark. He's just swimming along happily. He's just focused on getting to his girlfriend. That's all he truly 100% is focused on. And then whether or not the fish are tasty today. Is somebody bringing him cracked corn? Because we all know bread's bad for swans. We all do know bread is bad for swans, right? So you feed them cracked corn. You don't feed them bread. So when you go to the beach and you're feeding the seagulls, that's the wrong food if you're giving them bread. People do it all the time, but it's not the right food to give them. So you take your, you know, your bread that's no good anymore, and you take it down to go feed them? No. So if you're feeding a swan bread, you're also feeding your doubts bread. And they're swelling and blowing up and bloating and creating an even bigger problem because you're not focused forward. So if you want to talk to them in your imagination, physically out loud in your house, if you are focusing on this is bringing us closer together, do it. If you're telling them about your day, do it. Only if the meaning you're putting to it is we're getting closer. We're getting closer. I'm living in my end. But if your meaning is I'm crazy and I'm talking to myself and I'm dating myself and I'm doing all this weird stuff to be able to get what I want, then you're doing it all wrong. Focus forward is living in the end. Neville says to live in the end. Law of Attraction says to live in the end. Susie says live in the end. And everything you think, say, do should be to that end. If it's not, you're failing because you're not creating a life. You're depending upon one thing to make you happy. And in reality... You might get up out of bed in the morning and you're not even thinking about them. That's normal when you're married. You just literally crawled out of bed and you're thinking about, I got to hit the shower. Oh my God, the alarm didn't go off. You're in the bathroom getting ready for work and the first thing that pops into your head, because you, you, you would hear movement, hey babe, can you make me a cup of coffee to go? You might even forget to kiss them goodbye. You may not talk to them until lunchtime to say thank you for making me that cup of coffee. Because that's life. And right now, that wasn't the most important thing to do is to talk to them. So when I get home at night and I'm making dinner, it's never any fun to make dinner for one because you always have leftovers. 
and sometimes way too many leftovers. Naturally, you're going to think, well, I wonder what they want for dinner. But wait, they work from 5 to midnight. They work from 5 to 3 a.m. They're not going to be home to have dinner with me on those days that they work. So I am making dinner for one. Or I am going home and moping because I didn't create a life. Instead, I'm going out to dinner with my friends. I'm reading a book. I'm, I'm spending time with my family. I'm painting. I'm on Facebook. I'm creating everything I want my life to be so that when they are in my life, I'm not literally sitting at home on the couch waiting for him to punch out at work. If it's midnight, how many of us are actually up? If it's 3 a.m., are you up? Because I know I'm not. I'm sound asleep. And if I am up, I'm either reading a book or painting. Or I'm cleaning my house. I do that a lot at 3 a.m. because I can't sleep. So I get up and clean the house. Because it wears me out so I can go back to sleep. Focusing forward always. Everything I'm doing is working out for me. Everything I, I present, everything I say, everything I do, everything I think, it brings me closer and closer and closer to my goal. That's why my goals happen quickly and easily because I am solely 100% focused forward. Right, Patty, you're up at 2 a.m., but you get off work at 10 o'clock at night if you get out on time. So you're going home, relaxing, winding down, and if somebody else got off at midnight, that's okay. You're eating dinner with them. That's a good one, a content happy life. Why am I living such a content happy life? Because it gives you more than just one thing. It gives you literally your dream life. And Neville wanted you to create your dream life. Law of Attraction wants you to create your dream life. Now, I'm not going to tell you to vibrate to, at your dream life. I'm not going to tell you to live anything but the end and ask better questions. Because if you change your story and you ask better questions, I guarantee you're going to get it. And once you change your story and you start asking better questions... Those doubts don't come up. Those negative thoughts don't come up. Those bad feelings, they disappear. And you are focused on, why is everything going right? Why am I having so much fun? Why am I content? Why am I living my dream life? When I go home at the end of the day, everything's going to be amazing. You create every day. And especially women, we change our mind. Today I want this shirt. Last week I didn't. I looked at it and I'm like, eh. today I came home with four or five. But they're little tank tops that I can wear and layer when it's colder out. So I can wear a shirt that I can put on top of a little tank top and then when it gets hot and it's 80 degrees in the middle of the afternoon where I live, I can take my, my sweater off or my jacket that I'm on and I can be comfortable. But then when it cools down in the evening, I can put another jacket or a sweater on top of it and it's layered and I'm still warm. It's the same principle. Create a life. Do things. If you're sitting waiting for somebody to show up you're stuck in the middle. For me personally, when I can get the little easy stuff to go the way I want, then it's easier for me to create the bigger stuff. And that's true. And that's why Joe says make the list. Because if you're creating little things, you're building momentum. And you're creating a life. And then when the bigger manifestation comes along, like the car 
like the person, the house. And it isn't always buying the house. Sometimes it's selling the house. But if you're walking around saying, how am I going to afford the car payment? You're not getting the car. If you're walking around saying, I have my dream car, and it's affordable, I never thought I would get it at this price. It's so affordable, I, 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 I must have fallen in a pot of gold. My payments are so low that I could sneeze and get the money. The people who lose their cars, they're walking around going, I don't know how I'm going to make my payment. I don't know how I'm going to make my payment. The people who keep their car, it's easy to make my car payment. I always make my car payment on time. It's easy. I love making my car payment because I'm dream driving my dream car. I don't give a shit about the payment. The people who are making money, they live from a perspective that they're making more than they spend. They're not spending less than they make. They're making more than they spend. So you can go buy the ear pods. You can go buy the jewelry box. You can buy the car because you're always making more than you spend. I truly 100% want you guys just to walk around for a week and say, why am I living my dream life? Or, isn't it wonderful I'm living my dream life? Or, thank you, I'm living my dream life. Or, I don't know why I'm living my dream life. But I am. I'm living my dream life because I'm living my dream life. I'm living my dream life. As long as your focus is only on, I am living my dream life. What you put before it or what you put after it is only helping to affirm and reinforce it. I'm living my dream life because I'm living my dream life. And then when people say, why are you living your dream life? Everything's working out for me. I've got a new lease on life. I'm happy. Internally, I'm happy. That's not lying. That's telling the truth. So you can speak it out loud. But if you're asking if they're going to ask me how, they're going to. I don't. I don't ask people to tell me why I'm spoiled and people all around me Patty can attest to it they'll do something for me and somebody will say well Susie got that because she's spoiled and why am I spoiled because in my dream life I am build your dream life guys and the guy will come build your dream life girl and the girls will come it doesn't matter isn't it wonderful? I'm living my dream life. I am living my dream life. I feel good. Exactly. And the more you say that, the more you focus on that happening, you go to the grocery store when you hate grocery shopping and it's completely dead and it's five o'clock at night. Yes, Patty, we know I'm spoiled and we know I love being spoiled. I never used to be spoiled. Somebody did one nice thing for me. And they said, if people don't spoil you the way I do, they don't belong in your life. One person said that. And she did a nice thing for me. And then somebody else did a nice thing for me. Because that person kept saying, if they don't spoil you like I do, they don't belong in your life. Well, if I'm living my dream life and they're not spoiling me, do they belong there? Mm -mm. I love being spoiled. I love dream, living my dream life because my dream life means I get to teach people how to live their dream. It is very good to be spoiled. It doesn't matter if you can afford to buy it on your own. It doesn't matter if somebody else buys it for you. It doesn't matter if you buy it and somebody else carts it home for you and puts it together. Those are reasons to be spoiled.
So you have a question about your guy. Okay, let me read it. Thank you, Patty. I really appreciate that. She says, I deserve to be spoiled. Everybody deserves to be spoiled. Yvonne, you are freaking out because you're not living in the end. You're stuck in the middle of how it's going to work. So if you focus on, I'm living my dream life, I'm calm, I'm peaceful, I'm Buddha-like. I love that phrase. I want to be like the Buddha. The only problem is, I know that if I went to the tree and sat down and tried to meditate for 21 days, people are going to bring me their phones and be like, Susie, you got a message. Susie, you got a message. Susie, you got a message. Because that's what I envision. So that's chaos. I can't sit under a tree and meditate because if I'm sitting under a tree and meditating, everybody's coming to me for help. I can't help people meditate at the same time. So I have to focus on why am I calm? Just like Patty said, why am I so calm? Why am I so peaceful? Why am I blissfully happy? Why is everything working out for me? I get called the calm parent. Chaos ensues. I show up because there's been an accident, something's happened, and they're like, oh good, the calm parent's here. Seriously? I focus on being like the Buddha. I'm calm. I'm peaceful. I'm loving. I'm happy. Because I'm calm, I'm peaceful, I'm loving, and I'm happy. I don't know why I'm calm, but I'm calm. I don't know why I'm peaceful, but I am. Those words you literally can say out loud all day long. Why am I peaceful? I am peaceful. I'm peaceful because I'm peaceful. Isn't it wonderful? I'm peaceful. Isn't it wonderful? I'm calm. I'm Italian. I wasn't born calm. Trust me, I was not born calm. So I had to focus on being calm and that's exactly what I did. Why am I calm? Why am I calm? Why can chaos, an entire hurricane, a tornado, be swirling around me and I'm still calm and peaceful because I know if I freak out, other people are going to freak out. I know if I stay calm, I can keep the people around me calm. I can lower my voice. I can bring it. I can do and they will follow suit. Sweet Pea, you're still living in the middle. I love you. But if you're anxious and ready for it to finally happen, you're not living in the end. You're not 100% living from the end. You're living of the end. And living of the end is waiting for it to happen. From the end, you don't care. You don't care if they knock on your door in five minutes or five years. You know it's going to happen. You just don't know when. It's like I'm mailing you a package. So I put it through the postal service. And I left my house. And I told you it left. You know it's coming, you just don't know what date it's going to arrive. And I forgot to tell you whether or not I did it overnight, if I did this today, if I did it, what is that, book shipping, where they send it really, really slow. If you mailed a package from the United States to Italy, it's going to go through the postal service, then it might go on a plane or it could go on a boat. And then it's going to float across the ocean or fly across the ocean. It's going to get to Italy. It's going to be have to take it off the plane and sort it out, divide it up. Exactly. Book freight. It's going by boat. So instead of being there in a week, it's going to be there in a month. 
trust me, Patty and I know, if you send something overseas by the Postal Service, you're looking at a month. You know it's coming. Are you out there checking the mail every five minutes? No. You're just going about your life, and every day you come home, you check the mail. No, oh, it's not here tomorrow. It'll be, it'll be here tomorrow. Oh, it's not here tomorrow. Oh, well, maybe it'll be here the next day. That's where you're living. You're waiting to pick up the mail, expecting it to be in there, and you're, you're like, it's not here. It's not here. Me? I know it's coming. I guarantee you, I'm not checking the mail every day. I might check it still only once a week. Like, well, if it's in there, it's in there. And then I'll go pick up the mail. And it's been sitting in the mailbox for like three days. It's like shopping on Wish. It's shopping on Amazon. If you don't have Amazon Prime and you don't have two-day shipping, Amazon's sending it to you and you get a projected date. I just ordered something and they said between the 3rd and something of September. And I'm thinking, that's two weeks I have to wait for what I just bought? Maybe I should buy Amazon Prime. Yeah, no, I like free shipping. But I just don't want to buy Amazon Prime. Unless you can guarantee me I will always be able to watch an Alabama football game with Amazon Prime. Because they have TV, they have music, they have books. Not just free shipping. They have a package deal. So that it makes our lives easier and fun. And we're not just paying $12.99 a month for shipping. We can also read books, listen to music, and watch movies and TV shows. Brownie points for the person who can tell me on the internet where I can find an Alabama football game to watch every weekend of college football. You might even get a free coaching with me if you can show me exactly where. That's obsessive with Alabama. Yes, Patty, we know, but that's pro football. It's okay. You can have your cheese. I'm a Bama girl. We're good. Alabama doesn't have a pro team, so I don't have to worry about that. Obsessive. We're obsessed with Alabama football, but I know that football game is going to be on the 31st, and I will be parked in front of the TV watching it, and I won't be answering Facebook. Somebody told me about a new app today. It's called The Score. And then he even told me to find an easier way to be able to find out which channel on my cable has got the Alabama football game on it. It's one of four. It narrows down my life. Now I only have four channels I have to check instead of a hundred and something. I'm obsessed with Alabama football. But I'm not obsessed with living my life. You guys can hear the difference in that. I downloaded an app so I can track the football when I'm not at home. I downloaded another thing which tells me what channel they're going to be on just by scrolling through the channels. And I got it set up where I only see certain channels. I don't see 120 channels. I only see the 15 or 20 sports channels that I want to see. Because this person helped me set it up. I'm calm. I'm peaceful. I'm living in the end. I'm obsessed with Alabama football. But somebody made it easier for me to be able to watch them. And I do have the NFL app. And the ESPN app. And the hockey app. And I have a Blackhawk app. And I have the college football app. And the score. That's the new one I downloaded today. And on my NCAA football app, I believe that's what it's called, I have my team set up, so I always get reports on Alabama. Even when I'm not near my phone, my phone lights up and tells me something happened with Alabama. So Alabama's always texting me because they're doing something. They're recruiting. 
they're changing something with their coaching staff, somebody, we will forgive you if you left Alabama to go to another college as long as it's not the C1. They retired from college football and decided to go pro. But I'm not running to my phone every five minutes looking to see. Even though I'm obsessed with football, I'm not running to my phone every five minutes to check to see what I'm getting. Because I'm not really painting Patty. I'm cleaning my house. I'm playing with a three-year-old. I'm going to see my kids. I'm having dinner with friends. I'm going to get coffee. No, I don't need coffee. I still have coffee. I checked today. I actually had to check to see how much coffee I had. Well, that's because I knew I was going to be in the store, and if it wasn't busy, I might as well pick up coffee. But no, I don't need coffee yet. But that's the other thing we all know I obsess about because I do the coffee game and everything surrounding a cup of coffee. I just walked you through a whole obsession here about one thing in my life. But everything else works out for me because, and even though I'm obsessed with Alabama football, how many times do you hear it? They're number one because they cheat. No, they're number one because they're that good. No, they cheat. No, they're good. And that's the way you have to be. You only hear what you want to hear. You only see what you want to see. And in living your dream life, Alabama's always in the top. Wisconsin's always in the top. The Badgers do really good. I have great friends. I have a life that I created, so I'm not sitting on the couch obsessively waiting for the football game to come on, even though we're obsessed with it, or the love of my life to come home. But notice, I didn't say show up. I always say to come home. But he's out bowling with the guys. I don't care if he comes home. It could be 2 o'clock in the morning. He works midnight, 3 a.m. What if he needs to unwind because he had a bad night and he doesn't want to come home, wake me up, and take it out on me? Then he might go to the gym. He might go for a drive. He might go get something to eat and take that time to de-stress. But I'm looking at the clock going, um, it's 3 a.m. You didn't walk through the door. I'm not focused on living my dream life. I'm focused on he has to make me happy. It's 3 a.m. I woke up. Yes, we all need to manifest Susie painting. We all need to say, why does Susie find time to paint? Why does Susie find time to paint? Why is it so fun and easy for Susie to paint? Why does Susie show us progress in her paintings? See, that's why Patty's my go-to. She knows when I need a kick in the pants. And I'm not kicking y'all in the pants. I'm teaching you how to live your dream life. And Patty reminds me that I spend so much time doing so much that I forget to take time to create my own dream life. Which is why I preach happily. I'm happily. I'm happily. I'm happily. So I'm happily living my dream life. And finding more time to paint. Otherwise she's going to take all my toys away and lock me in my room and won't let me out until I produce a painting. I swear, I swear in my head I can hear you say that. You are going to do that if I don't produce it. Why is Susie finding time to paint and relax? Football's coming on and I always paint when I do football games. I love painting when I'm watching football. I have no idea what I'm going to paint. It just comes out on the paper. There's my dream. If you could put football games on 12 hours a day and give me a paintbrush, I'm going to go check in on Facebook. I'm going to do lives. I'm going to still go out to eat, but I guarantee you I'm going to find a restaurant that has the game on. Or 
I'm going to tell you that I won't give you that information until you tell me what the score of the game is. I've done that before. But if I need somebody to remind me to paint, we all need somebody to remind us then that if we're living our dream life, we have fun. We have plenty of time to paint. But there's a football game on. There's actually a couple football games on tonight. So I'm going to get off of here, and I'm going to go watch the end of the football game. And then I think I'm going to reclean my painting table and send Patty a picture because my painting table is a mess again. And I haven't even painted, but it's a mess. So then tomorrow, I can close the doors and find time to paint. And I will even put a picture on Facebook to show that I painted for you all. I love you guys. Have an amazing evening, morning, day, whatever it is in your part of the world. And know that I'm only telling you what I've had to learn the hard way to make it easier for you. I want to see a painting tomorrow. If you love to paint, let's all encourage Susie to paint by showing paintings. Patty sends me her pictures when she paints. So let's all go paint after we finish watching the football game. Good night, guys. Love you. Have an amazing, amazing, beautiful life because I know you will be living your dreams.